What's up, fight fans? Hope you're all surviving and thriving right now during this lockdown. It's the coronavirus edition of the Elite Amateur Fight League, launching a brand new podcast right here worldwide. I'm Jim Brieshaber, play-by-play voice of the EAFL, and what a treat today to kick it off episode one. We have one of the greatest stars in the UFC and the EAFL, the season one championship coach of the California Krakens, UFC middleweight, Light heavyweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, middleweight, light heavyweight. <laughs> Smiling Sam Alvey is with us and also the owner, the president, the guy who makes it all work, the guy who put this into play and into action four seasons ago as we continue to grow with the Elite Amateur Fight League, the one and only Jesse Nunez. And guys, what a great day it is. What a great opportunity it is for us to connect with our fans, our audience, our fighters to be here today. Thanks, Jim. Hey, you know, just want to give everybody a quick notice about uh, our event that was on uh, or scheduled uh, for March. Uh, we all know it got canceled. Uh, we have a new date, July 25th. Not sure that uh, the coronavirus is going to let that happen either. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, we've got some great plans and some things coming up uh, moving forward here with the Elite Amateur Fight League. I can't, I can't wait to share with everybody. We're surviving. We're thriving. We're building to the future. And we're just making things happen as we can, right? What's better than that? Nothing's better than that. And Sam, uh, you know, you're way over on the West Coast. Tell us a little bit about what's going on out there. What's the gym look like? Is it a ghost town? Like, what's going on with this coronavirus? Yeah, so the the gym actually had to close down. It, it was deemed non-essential by the, the gods of, of California, I guess. Um, and, and so it's we, – we, we do the best we can to, with, with what we've got. There's a, we got a lot of guys that, that had fights coming up, so they were all in the gym. And then, of course, I mean, the, all the fights in the world have canceled since then. So we're, yep. we're just, we're trying to, to train as best we can while still socially distancing so as to not get arrested or put in Corona jail. California just said no MMA events through May, right? So that means that your whole gym, your whole team, everybody's on shutdown. And I've seen a lot of different gyms doing a lot of really creative stuff, virtual workouts to keep members in shape on YouTube and places like that where they can go and do it. What are you guys doing to A, keep the members engaged and B, to keep the fight team going. Yeah, well, the, the fight team, it's, that, that's the one all you have to do is say, hey, guys, we're fighting soon, so stay, stay active. And you, you can uh, shoot half of us live together anyways. So we, we're all allowed to train. If you, if you live in the same house, you're allowed to train with one another. Uh, but as far as the gym goes, we're doing everything we can. We've got our YouTube channels going. Uh, we're doing fitness talks. We're doing fitness classes. Uh, my buddies are doing a wrestling class later today. Uh, we're, we're doing everything we can to try and keep the kids uh, and the adults and the, we had a we've got a big population in our gym and we're trying to keep them keep them as active as we can from from the comfort of their own home. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, so many people working out virtually, finding a way to get it done. Huge populations in the gyms, and you know, every business is finding a way to adapt right now. What about you, Jesse? Looks like you've got that home office all decked out, man. <laughs> well, the home office is cool. Thank God, you know, I've got the ability to continue editing and putting together great uh, uh, content. But man, we've, uh, we've been hit by it too. You know, we, we had an event scheduled uh, uh, a week and a half ago now, and uh, that was canceled. The state of Illinois has shut things down for the foreseeable future. They haven't even given us a, uh, a date where they think we may be able to fight again. Uh, so we have a, a venue and an event scheduled, scheduled for July 25th. But I'll be honest, man, I don't, I don't think the uh, restrictions will be laxed by then that event's probably going to move. But with that being said, you know, knowing where we are uh, with this coronavirus, knowing how it's affected all these other sports leagues, uh, we've got a plan for the future. And, and really what we're going to do this year, uh, we've never done before. And it's, it's exciting news. Sam, this is the first you'll hear of this. Yeah, so, uh, I'm excited. Yeah. Wait, hey, Jesse, before you let the cat out of the bag, I have to ask you, did Trump, did you get a call from the White House press secretary <laughs> to be on that call with all the sports leaders? Yeah, I, I wasn't part of that call, and uh, <laughs> I would have gladly taken it, and uh, I would have put my two cents in, uh, all, all two cents of it, but uh, no, not part of that call, Jim. What we're doing with the Elite Amateur Friday coming up next is uh, we're going to have a studio show. We know we're not going to be able to have any fans in attendance really soon here, uh, and to be honest, uh, we don't have the capacity to run six independent events in six different states for round one with these 12 teams that we have in, right? We for us to do that, it would have took us months and months to do it. We were considering the studio show to begin with. So what we're going to do is we're going to get all 12 teams uh, on a plane, travel them to a studio, and shoot all six events in one location in two days. Uh, similar to, oh. you know, like your, uh, yeah. your fighter does. 
but we're going to oh, get the whole first awesome. round knocked out. And, uh, you know, we're going to be able to pair up teams that wouldn't have normally been paired, right? Normally we do these regional matchups, Illinois, Indiana, California, Arizona, because they're close. We're going to be able to mix that whole thing up. So we're going to seed all of the teams, place them in a tournament bracket according to their seed so that we, we kind of level the playing field for everybody. It's just not the West Coast knocking out the West Coast or the Midwest knocking out the Midwest. We truly want to find the two best teams for the championship. And the only way to do that is to have a seated bracket. We're going to be able to do that with bringing all of the fighters to one location for a studio show for round one of the tournament. Oh, that's amazing. That's, a, that's going to be so much fun. Oh, Sam, that's what are, what are so your first cool. thoughts, man? Like, what do you, what do you think you're going to love most about that? Oh, that's, it's going to be just, it's going to be two days of just fighting. And I've always loved tournament style things, which is one of the reasons I've loved the elite amateur fight league is it's a tournament, you can, but to do it in two days like that, that would, that's going to be so much fun to be part of, especially when I get to, you know, my, my team gets to, to beat some other state from, from not right around us. Oh, if we get to fight Florida or Virginia or Illinois again, Oh, the Kraken's going to win this season. I'm telling you, I have, I've been training <laughs> since we, I didn't have a great season last year. Our team, our team didn't, we fell apart a little bit, but uh, I've really rebuilt. We've got some strong studs looking to, to make an impression and that, that we get to go and do it on a fight weekend like that. That's yeah. going to be, that's going to be something else. Well, the other part of that is, you know, now you have the ability to see the rest of the teams, right? So yeah. they're going to be able to watch your fight. You're going to be able to watch their fight. There'll be some com camaraderie built in the hotel, I'm sure. But at the end of the day, you're all going to have to go at it at some point. But uh, I think uh, one mm -hmm. of the interesting factors here is, you know, Arizona would fight California on the West Coast. We'd record it for broadcast. The Midwest guys never got to see it. Then Illinois would fight Indiana in the Midwest, and the West Coast guys never got to see it. So they did. it wasn't fair for me to share that, uh, that footage with either or because at the end of the day, if neither of them saw it, it was fair. Now you're going to be able to sit there and watch Illinois versus Virginia, and they're going to be able to watch California versus New Mexico. Oh, it it so makes exciting. it more like the NCAA tournament, Jesse, which was our goal from the beginning with the EAFL, and, and we've all been here from the very beginning. So it's really – we're the OGs right here. So yeah. I look at it and I go, man, from, from where we started and having everybody there, it gives it that feel of March Madness that the NCAA does with basketball. Mm -hmm. All the teams are there. All the coaches – are there and the networking i mean think about this and sam i'd love to hear your thoughts on this because no sport is better than mma when it comes to getting a bunch of fighters getting a bunch of coaches getting a bunch of retired fighters getting a bunch of people who just love the sport in one area together you could potentially have a mike brown with a, with a jackson wink coaching team and a sam alvey and a dan henderson and you could have all these people a joey via senior you know, a, a Danny Castillo, all these guys in one place for a couple of days, not only throwing ideas around, not only hanging out and telling old stories, but for the fighters who are fighting in the EAFL to have the opportunity to rub elbows with all those people in one spot, whereas before they couldn't, to me, that's incredible. I love that element of it right there. Yeah. That, oh, I, I haven't even, re I, I just found out about it. So I hadn't even thought about that, but yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be something else. I mean, these amateurs who, who are good amateurs, who are likely to be good pros, are going to get this end their amateur career winning this, you know, this EAFL tournament along. I mean, sitting next to UFC fighters and UFC coaches and coaches from around. I mean, they, they too often fighters get so comfortable just training with their guy, with their team, their team is the best, that they lose sight of what other teams have to offer. And to be able to bump elbows with a Greg Jackson kind of, kind of team and, and just pick their brain a little bit, that that's going to be just do wonders for the, the amateurs as well. Yeah, man, we're really excited about it. It's something we wanted to do. We couldn't, uh, we couldn't do it early on. Obviously, we all had a bootstrap budget here, and, and flying everybody to one place is going to be considerably expensive. But at the end of the day, really, the coronavirus made a decision for us. We're not going to be able to do this any other way. Like, at the end of the day, it was either do it this way or don't do it at all because we don't know when these restrictions will be laxed. And, uh, you know, so – uh, making uh, lemonade out of lemons, uh, we're going to go with it, man. We're going we're gonna to commit to it. We're going to get everybody in one place. And, uh, uh, Jim, you get to interview all 42 of these guys or how, <laughs> however many there are, so get, be ready. I was going to say, get, get somebody, and I'm not going to mention any brands because they're not paying me. I'm going to pull a Kawhi Leonard or a uh, Izzy Adesanya and throw the Monster Energy drink off the podium because they don't sponsor me. But, no, I'm kidding. I mean, you better get a throat lozenge deal for Frankie and me because that's a lot of fights to call. <laughs> they better have, like, a, a, an ear, nose, and throat right there for us. But other than that, being prima donnas, it's, it's a lot of fun just to get in there and do it and roll the sleeves up 
and just dig in for a couple of days and immerse yourself. And not only that, Jesse and Sam, the, the opportunities are endless, not only for the fighters, not only for the coaches to get different technique, different perspective, different points of view. It's good for the sport. It's great for the league. But also think of all the different things that can be added as we move along to be different services for the fighters. If you're a meal prep guy, you can come in and make meals for all these fighters and the fighters can eat healthy. And it's a great opportunity for that company to get exposure. Or if you're a company that comes in and does physical assessments of the fighters or value adds for the fighters who come in and the coaches who come in, you have a captive audience. You have all these people in one place for a couple of days and all these different things. We could make educational symposiums and forums for these young fighters. Teach them how to do interviews like, oh my God, this reminds Sam, you're so funny, man. Jesse, just put this video out. Pick one. Quiet on up, please. All right, David, tell me who you are, how long you've been training, and what kind of fighter you are. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on. Dave, hey, right. hey, get in there. <laughs> Dave, get in here with them. So Sam, tell me what just happened. <laughs> First question, tell me your name. It's David Lopez, and we all know that, right? Sorry. Slow down, slow down, don't go so fast. <laughs> it's too fast, man. Just all right, cut guys, weight. Get out of there. <laughs> <sighs> all right, again. And it was poor David. The guy couldn't say his name. He was so nervous. And, you know, I mean, we could teach people how to interview, teach people how to market themselves, all sorts of cool things in an event like this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, going back to where we started, guys, I mean, both of you were here in the very first concept season. I wouldn't even call it season one. We had a concept season where Arizona fought California over in, in Mesa and uh, Indiana fought Illinois down in Indianapolis. And that was really just us recording the concept, putting it together to pitch it to broadcast. And, uh, you know, way back then, I would have never thought five years later, uh, we'd be bringing 12 teams to one location on NBC Sports Regional Networks. We got some other things in the works with some other broadcasters we're hoping to, to make a deal with. But uh, again, man, making uh, lemonade out of lemons without professional baseball and football and basketball happening, there is some opportunity for, for new content to hit bigger broadcasters that there's never been before. And uh, we're going to do our best uh, to get our content out there. Even, even season one, Sam, where, where you guys won a national championship, we're completely re-editing it. We're making it a bit, a little bit better of broadcast quality. We're going to get that back out there on the air and kind of lead people into where we are today, right? Going into season four, we didn't start here with 12 teams. We started with four teams five years ago. And uh, I just want to talk a little bit about that, man. Five years ago, Sam, uh, yeah. we give you a call, right? We, we tell you a little bit about what we're doing. And I think someone kind of, kind of tried to sell you this orange juice before and it didn't work out, but, uh, Tell, you know, why, why did you give us a chance, man? Why did you decide to bring a team in the Elite Amateur League? You and I really didn't know each other back then. You didn't know if I was just another one of those guys uh, uh, selling the assault, you know. But at the end of the day, why did you join? Yeah, you know, uh, mo most of the time in the MMA world, if someone's talking to you, they are trying to sell you assault. So it's, they, it's like they all want something for as little as possible. And so you go in there, or I went in there, and I was just, okay, it's, it's a fight. A fight's good. Uh, we're gonna get. We're gonna at least get gas money out of it. Maybe, we'll go from there. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe get gas money. Maybe, maybe get gas money. <laughs> uh, and it, at the end of the, it, the premise was was wonderful. It, it's hard to find hard hard fights, and it is. Uh, the the amateurs nowadays they're not quite the same as when I was an amateur. When I was an amateur, they say, "Hey, that guy's a pro. You want to fight him instead?" Yeah, okay, sure. And they just fought everyone. Now it's, I mean, MMA has turned into an industry in, in itself. So to get a good fight is hard because coaches don't let it happen. Uh, and then you guys, the AFL came in and they said, listen, we've got good fights. Uh, we're going to put them on. We're going to make it happen. And it's going to be, it's going to be really successful. I said, all right, but my, my guys need some good fights. I need to find, you know, that next level of, of athlete. And um, it, it worked out. I mean, we were taken care of. We, we got more than gas money. Uh, and it was, it was a level of experience that amateurs don't often get. And, you know, so that was season one. Season two was even better, three even better, four. It, the, the experience with, with the league has just gotten bigger and better every year. And uh, the level of talent that I've been able to see uh, in and out of every, every year is just, just incredible. Uh, I, I'm really glad I got into the UFC uh, when I did because seeing what these kids can do now is, hey, man, young Sam might not have been able to compete quite as well. No, you've had some great fighters on your team, but you also coached against Indiana's Ricky Farrar, who, who won a fight against one of your guys in the national championship, the only loss that one of the Twin Dragons has on his record. 
Yeah, yeah, he beat the unbeatable, and I couldn't believe it. Um, and then I, a week later, I was back in Indiana for something else, and Ricky was there, and he, he had, if you know Ricky, he gets shirtless immediately. Because, well, he, he, <laughs> I would too. I would too if I were him. Yeah, I know, right? If I look like him, I'd never have a shirt on. So, so he, he got up. I was at another event. He got up, took the shirt off, like, yeah, Sam, we can't kick your guy's butt. Uh, I said, okay, okay. So, I, yeah, I called him, like, right after. I said, hey, what would it take to get you out to California? And I said, I don't know. You got a place to stay. I'll be there. He said, all right, let's do it. And how long ago was this? Probably about three years ago. So he's been there ever since. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've, uh, I've got the third car garage, and we turned that, that uh, third car into – it's probably the nicest room in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Sam, you know, I want to I wanna keep going with that theme because you're a Midwestern guy. You're not necessarily – quote unquote, a California guy, and you're moving around the country and meeting people from all over the place. But what else for the fighters? Now, you talked about finding good fights, and that's got to be number one in your development, right? Finding good competition to measure yourself mm -hmm. against when the losses don't count, that's obviously number one. What are some of the other biggest benefits in your mind, not only to the fighters, but to you in terms of, you know, the exposure or, you know, competing against people from other states and getting to know and see what fighters are doing at other gyms. What are the other biggest benefits of being in the EAFL for you? Yeah, I, I always say that the amateur career is the, it's important to learn how to be a pro. You don't want to learn to be a pro when you're a pro. You learn to be a pro when you're an amateur. And something that happens when you're a pro is you never, you rarely fight in your backyard. You usually have to go somewhere to fight. And that's an experience that amateurs don't have because who's going to pay amateurs to, to fly across the country to fight a, a guy you'd have no idea about. Except, uh, for, me. So the, <laughs> except for you, right. I mean, the, the, that's the list. It's the EAFL. <laughs> and uh, so it's that helping amateurs deal with that, that level of stress of knowing what your weight is, flying across country, dealing with whatever – dietary needs you have on the flight getting to the hotel learning how where you can cut weight if you can cut weight if you need if there's a sauna if the hotel room doesn't have a, a bathtub um and just learning all that and to be able to do that as an amateur it's it's just about unheard of it was unheard of up until about five years ago yeah for sure and you know with that being said you know you, you've been here since the start and you've dealt with different coaches you've seen some of these different teams uh, since the start, what's the biggest change you've seen with the Elite Amateur Fight League? Uh, being that you were here when we were just a concept, you're here going into the, ne the next season, season four. What's the biggest difference from then and now? The willingness, I think the biggest difference is the willingness of other coaches to let me be a coach for an afternoon. I, I mean, I've, it was, I've had more than one guy. Well, one guy in particular, I, I started talking to his fighter and stuff. And I, I say, hey, where's your coach? I'd love to talk to you guys. Halfway through my sentence, he put his hand in my face and just said, yeah, go away, go away. I mean, he didn't want to hear – he thought I was trying to steal his fighter. Um, but now we've got five seasons under the, under the belt. We've got televised um, a proof of, of what we're doing, proof of product. And uh, it's, it's very easy to sell to these, fighter, to these coaches now. Say, hey, I'm not trying to steal anything. I'm trying to give you guys an opportunity. You'll be, you'll be invited to be part of this. It's a great organization. Uh, and, and the willingness of, co of coaches of, you know, elite amateurs uh, to, to deal with me is, is changed quite a bit. I think what I've seen that's changed the most has been people being receptive, just like Sam did. But from my point of view, I see it that our reputation precedes us. I go out and I cover the UFC and I run into coaches and fighters all the time from all over the place. And when I see a Joey Villasenor or a Danny Castillo at the UFC events, they're going, Hey, man, I love that dude, Jesse. I love the EAFL. You know, what you guys are doing in traveling fighters. And so then when Jesse reaches out to get more teams and get more people involved, it's a small world, let's face it, in, in MMA, and everyone knows each other. So once that word starts to spread and you build that reputation, I see a lot more coaches, teams, gyms, and people being receptive to the league. And not only receptive to it, but embracing it as a big part of what they do with their, their gym and their program. Uh, thanks, Jim. Yeah, I mean, we, we do our best to uh... – uh, to supply everything that, that we say we're going to supply, right? I mean, Sam, you, you know this, uh, MMA is a, a tough sport sometimes, and you might, you may or you may not get gas money. You may or you may not get a hotel room. Maybe they're squeezing five guys into a, into a two-bedroom room. You know, we try to, I mean, we have a shoestring budget. Don't get me wrong. We're, we're doing our best to make it happen. But uh, everything we ever offer, we always make sure to deliver. And I think that that's really 
uh, the difference. That's the elite amateur fight league difference is we actually supply what we say we're going to supply. Uh, we do what we say we're going to do. We never offer anything we know we can't supply. So uh, I think just those things, just uh, being true to your word, uh, giving everybody everything you said that you were going to give them. I think that's really the difference between who we are and what other promoters do. Yeah. Other promoters really are about them making that money. They're, they're about them and the fighters second. I've not experienced that with the AFL. They've really put the fighters first at every turn, every decision they've made. I felt has been to how to, how to make the, the fighters more comfortable so they get a better product. I want to, I want to thank both of you guys for coming on today and, and talking with us and, uh, uh, you know, just letting everybody know what's going on. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, from the start of this whole journey, you guys have been there for me uh, on a personal level uh, to help us get this thing going. So uh, my, my gratitude to both of you guys, man. Uh, this thing doesn't happen uh, without guys like you, and it, it can't go unrecognized. Uh, so, so thanks a lot. Oh, you're very welcome. It's, it's a pleasure working with you, and I, I've really been blessed get, getting to know you over the last couple of years. And the, the, the elite amateur fight league has really been a blessing for, for my team. Yeah, I, I would say the same, Jesse. I appreciate our friendship. And, you know, one thing, you're there for the fighters. You're there for the coaches, the teams. You really care about this league, and you really care about the people in it. And I can say that from experience because I'm at every event. We don't always see eye to eye on everything. You know, I wanted my own plane, for example, and you said no. But, you know, it, it's just – it's <laughs> literally <laughs> – it's just, you know, come on, charter me in. But it's like literally, you know, it's an experience that's unforgettable. And I leave every single EAFL fight weekend having met new people, made new friends, and being better off for it. And it all starts because you really care so much and you give the people an experience that they wouldn't have otherwise. And to see those eyes light up, well, I flew out here with Arizona. Well, not out here. I'm in Arizona. I flew to Illinois with Arizona for the championship last year. And to see those fighters' eyes when they were in the airport and when they got off the plane, they're like, whoa, is this really happening? Like, Mama, I made it, you know, and, and, and like Sam said, that's that learning to be a pro while they're an amateur and being treated like a pro while you're an amateur. I think they really appreciate mm -hmm. that and it trickles down to everybody else. Jesse <laughs> Nunez, Sam Alvey. Sam's got some big things coming up. We can't talk about them right now. Uh, we just know Dana White's going to keep moving forward. The whole world could stop spinning and Dana White will still keep moving. But keep following Sam because he's got some big news coming up soon. And Jesse, we're going to have round one coming up really soon with the Elite Amateur Fight League. It's all going to be in one place this year. It's going to have that legit feel of the NCAA tournament. So what a great conversation to get this going with this podcast. Appreciate both of you guys being here. We have to do it again soon. For all of you out there, thanks for watching this. The Elite Amateur Fight League. Keep following us on all of our social platforms. We're going to keep pumping out content like this, like all the old fights that you've missed because a lot of new fans coming in. Come check out the one place in the world where you can see the best amateur talent in a team versus team, state versus state format. You know what it is. It's the Elite Amateur Fight League. Hey, I've got, you're going to laugh. I went through a box that I had no idea it was in this box because it's coronavirus, so we're cleaning shit up around here. And I've got, like, season one California Kraken stuff that I'm going to send you. Okay, like, yeah. It's not going to fit in, and they're huge. Like, I remember, do you remember the concept season where all the shorts came too big? They came from Vietnam or something? They, yeah, no, they, they were, came from, <laughs> you know how they came from. But all the yeah, shorts were, like, they, they were, were giant huge. shorts. Yeah. But and nobody uh, got, got to a wear couple them. of those. I, and so I'll send you everything I got. Maybe you got some big guys in the gym that can wear them. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I got one or two that, that they might fit. <laughs> These things wouldn't have fit the big show. <laughs> <laughs> they were huge, man. They were huge. <laughs>